Today we're going to look at mass selection, which is a method in which we can take a certain trait in a population and intentionally use data to try to figure out who are the best parents in order to breed offspring with that desired phenotype. For this example, we'll specifically talk about a population of peacock. I chose a peacock because one random day a peacock showed up in our backyard in my home in Florida and has lived there for over a year. We do not know how he got there, but we enjoy looking at his feathers and he does not bother any neighbors, so we just let him be. But for the sake of this example, we will pretend that there is a population of peacocks, and I would like to breed peacocks with larger feathers because of their ability to better fend off predators like raccoons from eating our trash. We are given a mean feather length indicated by the mu sign of 6 feet, and our standard deviation is 1.63 feet. We are also given a broad sense heritability, which is the proportion of phenotypic variance due to some sort of genetic effect of 0.85 and a realized heritability which is a phenotypic variance due to additive genetic effects of 0.67. We have concluded that we want to breed another generation using the top 10% of parents in terms of feather lengths in our population. With this information we can now find the truncation point which is the smallest feather length value that can be used in order to breed with the 10% parents. Taking the mean and adding it to the product of the standardized selection point value or z from a given table in the standard deviation we get a truncation point of 8.09 feet. Anything above this value will be considered a parent in the top 10% and would be ideal for breeding. We also can take another value from the same table, the selection intensity, or I, and multiply it with the standard deviation to find the selection differential, which is the distance from the current mean population and the mean feather length of the selected parents from the breeding. This value, 2.86 feet, then can be added to the mean feather length of the current population and thus find the mean length of the selected parent's feathers, which comes out to be 8.86 feet. We can take this selection differential and also use it to find the extent to which the feather lengths change over a single generation. By this we take our given realized heritability value of 0.67 multiplied with the selection differential value of 2.86 feet to get our value of 1.92 feet. We then can find the mean population of the next generation by taking our mean from the previous generation, which was 6 feet, and combining it with 1.92 feet to get a new mean of 7.92 feet. Through my successful breeding, my peacock army should have a more effective way of getting rid of potential raccoon trash eaters by spreading their longer feathers. However, if I keep breeding peacocks and continue to increase their feather length, eventually their response might decrease because at a certain point these feather lengths couldn't be a disadvantage to other parts of their life like fending off other species in the area for food it could possibly lead to peacocks with feather length, longer feathers to die off. Also peacocks with larger feathers have a possibility of being sterile due to its increasing feather length and therefore would not have success in breeding and passing on its trait to offspring.